happens if you take the Stream Deck and add more buttons? Well, you get a Stream Deck XL. Now, what about adding a bunch of knobs? Well, then you get a Stream Deck Plus. Okay, now what if you want more knobs, more screeny buttons, and some good old fashioned regular buttons, and also more control over everything that you can do with it? Well, I got you there. That's the Loop Deck Live, also known as the Razer Stream Controller. And that's what we're about to talk about on your boot sequence. This video is brought to you by Software Keep. Software Keep provides software products like Windows 10, Windows 11, Microsoft Office for both Windows and Mac, and more. They offer digital keys with top notch customer support. Their motto is power to the PC, service to the people. It's all right. All your purchases are secured and safe with a lifetime product guarantee. There's no robots there. It's all humans. Actually, that should be their slogan. Anyways, go to Software Key for your software needs. That should be another slogan. And get 20% off with the discount code BSYT or BSIT for 20% off your purchase. All you have to do is add the stuff to your cart, click on the enter promo code area right there, enter the promo code, and click apply. Thanks, Software Keep. All right, so this is the Loop Deck Live. I also have the Live S, and Loop Deck has a bunch of other models too, but most of my testing was done on the Loop Deck Live. So let's open it up. In the box, you get the Loop Deck. Yeah, it might be a little grimy since I've been using it for a few weeks, but I wanted to show you the unboxing experience. So you get the Loop Deck, a nice USB Type-C cable with a 90 degree bend, also comes with a USB Type-A to Type-C adapter. Thank you very much, Loop Deck. And there's a little stand that allows you to prop up your Loop Deck. So you just hook it up right here and boom, it's going to be propped up. I personally have to remove it because we're going to be filming this. So that was the box. Let's get onto the loop deck. You get 12 touch sensitive buttons here at the center with vibration for feedback. You have six knobs, which also works as buttons. See, you can... I don't know if you can hear that, but they do click down. You get relevant info as to what the knobs actually do on these two little separations in the screen. And of course, you've got a home button and seven other buttons that are programmable. So let's go ahead and plug it in to see what the software looks like, both on the computer and right here. As you can see, right next to the knobs, what you have here on the default screen is basically information on what the knob does. If I go up here, you can see that the number goes up, which is the number for the volume, of course. You have playback control here, so you can go this way to back up in a video, the other way to go forward and play pause. This is scrolling up and down on a web page. This here is for the brightness if you have a laptop, very useful. And here's to scroll side to side, which isn't super useful for a web page, but you could use this on one of your profiles for, for example, scrubbing through a timeline. By the way, this main screen here is basically on when you're doing absolutely nothing, browsing the web or on the Explorer page in Windows. It's super easy to add new pages. You just have to click right here and you can go ahead and basically add a new page. And there you go. Now we have a blank page and you can see that the loop deck also went blank. You can switch between these pages by actually just swiping like this across all of the little screens. Look. See, and then I go back to my new page and there you go. If I wanted to add anything to this screen right here, all I would do is go onto the Loop Deck app, grab what I want. So let's say I want to, want to trigger a web page. I click on the web page, I drag the web page to the button that I want. There you go. I insert here at the bottom right what the website I want to go to. So youtube.com. I give it a name if I want to. YouTube. And you can add a little logo if that's something that you want to do. Then just press save. And as you can see, right away, I have a YouTube button right there. And when I press this, it opens Edge on YouTube.com. So what we did right here was very simple. We just added a link, a hyperlink to one of the buttons. But you could do so much more. You have keyboard shortcuts, open applications, web pages, which is what I did, sounds, text, uh, multi-action, so macros and multi-toggle. You have dial adjustments, so basically you could tell the dial what to do. And that's just the custom part of the loop deck. If you go to OS, you're gonna see so much more. 
Here, for example, this is something that I was looking at because every time I paste something, I want to remove the formatting, but I didn't know you could just make the clipboard uh, into title case, make it sentence case, lower case. This is actually super useful for uh, captioning on my shorts, but you got more stuff. Control center, date and time, device navigation, keyboard, keyboard modifiers, which I opened up. You can see that this thing can go pretty deep in customizability, but so does the Stream Deck. So why would you buy something like this when the Stream Deck exists? Well, first you can see that it has a little more going on physically for it. It's got more knobs and buttons, but really, to me, it's that this thing is a lot more aimed as a plug and play solution for software. It doesn't ship blank like the Stream Deck. You actually have a bunch of profiles on their Loop Deck software that allows you to open the app and just go. For example, if I open up Lightroom Classic, take a look at this. I open it up, instantly the Loop Deck switches to a different interface where I'm able to basically change stuff on the picture. Take a look at this. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, change my highs. So this is the brightness. I can change the shadows. I can change the color temperature super easily. Ooh, that's nice, okay. I can change the exposure so I can make it darker or brighter. I can, I'm not sure what this is. Contrast, contrast, of course, yes, it's contrast. But you can see that there's uh, customizability right here. And let's say here, I have highs, shadows, and texture. I'm, I can just swipe here. And now I have a different set of uh, modifiers, like clarity, blacks, and whites. And I didn't have to do anything to get that. I just plugged it in, opened up Lightroom Classic, and there you go, I had all of this uh, control inside the little loop deck. And you have multiple pages. Like for example, I could click here, you have color mode, overlay, previous, you could press here and crop the picture right away. You see, it, it, it just does it here. If I go, what, what is this? I can rotate it, I guess. I could, yeah, I can rotate. Rambling. I mean, this is just customizability uh, at the palm of your hand, and it works with any compatible software like OBS, Premiere, Photoshop, DaVinci Resolve, also productivity softwares like PowerPoint and Excel, and even things like Instagram, Spotify, or Twitch. And if Loop Deck didn't make a profile for you, it's likely that someone else has. That's where the marketplace comes in. Take a look at this. If I go into the marketplace right there, you get profiles for Blender, Magix Vegas, VLC, and even Microsoft Flight Simulator. Oh, and you can of course buy icon packs in their marketplace if you don't like the ones that are provided. Now, it's not perfect. The Vegas profile I tried was meh, with very little features, and the software that I make music on, which is Propellerhead's Reason, only has a profile for Mac, which is kind of weird since it's probably about the same shortcuts. So anyways, it's clear that it's gonna take an effort from the community to have more and better profiles. But all in all, I like the Loop Deck. I can see myself using something like this to make my life easier and eventually have the perfect companion for my mouse and keyboard because that's exactly what it aims to be. So yeah, I guess the last thing to talk about is the price for this specific model. I'm gonna put the price right here, I guess. Yeah, right here. Um, it is a little expensive when compared to other things like the Stream Deck, but I do believe that the software optimization done by Loop Deck definitely is worth that amount of money. They also have the Loop Deck Live S, which has more front buttons. It only has two knobs, but it has four of these kinds of buttons. They have the Loop Deck CT, which is way more expensive. At this point, we're talking almost uh, $500, and it is feature-packed. So yeah, what do you guys think about this thing? Personally, I think that there is a future where everybody has some kind of device like this in addition to a uh, keyboard and a mouse. But hey, that's pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it. As usual, it is right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.